this video looks at population growth or how quickly a population changes in size over time. If we think about outback Queensland, there are times where we might get mouse plagues. So there, the mouse population size can increase very quickly, but then at the same time, the population can decrease very quickly again back down to low numbers after a certain period of time. So the size of a population depends on a number of factors. So population size depends on the number of births, the number of deaths, the number of individuals moving into an area, also known as immigration, or the number of individuals that are moving out of an area, or emigration. So, and how we can calculate the size or the change in a population using this formula. So R equals the change in the population size, and it can be calculated by taking the number of births and adding the number of immigrations or individuals moving into an area, and subtracting the sum of the number of deaths and emigrations or Im individuals leaving an area. So if we do that, that will tell us the change in the size of a population. So when we do this calculation, it will tell us what the population growth is, or the change in the size of that population over a certain period of time that you're looking at. So that's population growth. This is different to when we determine how quickly or how slowly a population is changing in size. This is when we can look at population growth rate or the rate of change of a population over a certain period of time. How are those two things different though? So if we were to take these two graphs here, we can see that on the first one, this is about the change in the size of a population. So we can see that over time, the population increases and then it increases a bit faster until it reaches a maximum level and continues at that rate. So this is where the population size is remaining consistent over time. If we took that same population and instead graph the population growth rate curve, where we're showing how quickly or slowly that population is changing, this same population would look like this, where there is a quick increase in the population size, so where it hits a maximum point, and then as it starts to slow down and go back down to zero, where there is no more change in the population over time. Okay, these two graphs are representing the same population. This one though is population size, so the number of individuals, whereas this one is showing the, the change in the population and the rate of change over, over a period of time. organisms have a range of limiting factors that affect their survival. So the particular abiotic factors are things like temperature, sunlight, nutrients, water, pH, salinity and humidity. If an organism is living outside its tolerance range and it will have a particular range which is suitable, then it won't be able to survive. So if we have an organism that's living in very high temperatures, it will die if it's outside its tolerance range, and that's going to have a consequence on population size. Another way to look at it is that these factors affect a population size independent of how many individuals of that population are there, or how high dense or low dense the population size is. There may also be an environmental disaster where a change in the abiotic factors may quickly reduce the number of individuals, so quickly reduce population growth. All of these factors are density independent. They are it doesn't matter if the individuals are living in an area where there is a high density of that population or a low density of that population. 
So we call this the abiotic factors are density independent. In addition to the abiotic limiting factors, there are also biotic limiting factors or where other individuals can affect the size of another species population. So those factors include competition, so when members of different species are fighting over resources like food, water, shelter, that can have an effect on both populations size. Predation or predator-prey relationships are also a limiting factor that can affect the population of a certain species. So if, for example if predator numbers were to increase then we would expect the prey numbers to then decrease. A third limiting factor is infection. So in all of these cases, if there are, these are density dependent factors, so the higher the density of individuals that are living in a space, so as density increases, the number of individuals living in a certain area increases. If you imagine humans living in a city compared to humans living in a more rural area, and if we talk about infection, the individuals who are living in a more crowded environment are more likely to succumb to any particular infection because it's much easier for it to be transmitted from individual to individual when they're in a crowded or high density environment. If we come back to the comp competition limiting factor, there's two aspects that we'll talk about in another video, and that's the competitive exclusion principle and resource partitioning. And the competitive exclusion principle states that no two species can simultaneously occupy the same niche for a long period of time. And what ends up happening is they, they partition the resources amongst them. So for example, if we had a tree and there was a certain group of species that lived in that tree, so we may have one particular group of that chose to live in the top of that tree where they fed on a smaller berries or the fresher leaves and needed higher amounts of sunlight. There could be another species of bird that chose to live in the middle parts of the tree where they fed on insects that tended to hide in the burrows and but they were still living in that same tree. What they've done is to partition their resources because they can't all live in that same area because there's not enough resources to share. There could be a third bird that still lives in this tree but it's living down the bottom here where it's feeding on much larger land-based insects or the leaf litter that the insects are hiding under and so there could be three separate individual species living in this one location but because of the competitive exclusion principle they have decided to live in different spaces so that the resources have been partitioned. We'll come back to that topic in another video. Okay, but to summarise population growth is a change in the size of a population over time and we can calculate it using this formula. And this is different to population growth rate where we're looking at how the speed at which the population size changes. Okay.